Hi, I'm Brian for your Tuesday High School Biology. Today's topic, water and carbon. Water and carbon are two important substances in high school biology, so we're going to hit them right now. Water consists of two hydrogens covalently bonded to an oxygen. I know it looks like Mickey Mouse drawing like this, bear with me. As we discussed last lesson, water is a polar molecule. That means it has a positively charged end and a negatively charged end. Let me show you. Oxygen is strongly electronegative, so it has a strong pull on electrons. That makes the oxygen end very negative. But this also leaves the positive protons on the hydrogen end exposed, so the other end is very positive. This allows for a pretty cool phenomenon known as hydrogen bonding. You may have heard the phrase that opposites attract. That's all hydrogen bonding is about. See, negative charges are attracted to positive charges and vice versa. So when you get a bunch of water together, like this, the positively charged hydrogen on this water will be attracted to the negatively charged oxygen on the next one. And so also here, and also here, and also here. And so they will form a few weak bonds between each other, but it's still a bit of a pull. Now, it is very rare though that you will find pure water in nature. So we're going to discuss solutions and suspensions. Both happen when you can mix water or some other liquid with something else. In this case, we'll take a look at water. In a solution, you can dissolve something into a liquid. Like, let's say this is a um, substance shaker. We'll put any substance in it. In a solution, you put the substance into the liquid and it dissolves. You won't be able to see the particles just by looking. With water, this means normally a polar or charged substance needs to go in. The alternative to a solution is something else that starts with an S. It's known as a suspension. This is when the molecules do not dissolve. Like, let's take our substance shaker again. You'll see some blobs, maybe, and it may even settle out on the bottom. For water, this means large molecules and usually fatty, nonpolar molecules. Let me give you an example. Milk is a suspension. You might be going, wait, but milk is more or less uniform. Well, that's because it's been homogenized. If milk weren't homogenized, you might actually get lumps in your milk. Thank goodness milk is homogenized. Okay, there's one more thing I need to talk about, and that's the pH scale. pH scale determines acidity or basicity. Basically, they're acids at the bottom and bases on the top. A pH of 1 is super, super acidic. Do not touch a pH of 1. To give you an idea, stomach acid has a pH of 2. Do not put your hand in your stomach. In fact, your, your stomach regularly digests itself. It regrows the cells, of course. A pH of 7 is about pure water. You can put your hand in a pH of 7 and not really worry about it. Blood has a pH of about 7.4. That means it's actually slightly basic. Now, a, P a pH of 14 is very basic. I wouldn't touch a pH of 14. But to give you an idea, bases are basically the a opposites of acids. If you put an acid into a base or base into an acid, they start becoming more neutral. All right, let's move on to carbon. Carbon is a really cool element. It's represented by a C. That's what carbon looks like. It can form up to four bonds. That's a lot of bonds. OK, there's some elements that can form even eight bonds. But four bonds is enough to form a lot of molecules. And since we're carbon-based life forms, we are made up of a lot of this stuff. All right, let me just jump first to this idea of polymers. Polymers are really big molecules. They're just big molecules. They're made up of monomers, which are smaller molecules. We're going to talk about a bunch of carbon-based monomers. First up, the carbohydrates. You may have heard about these. If you put a bunch of carbohydrates together, they make up the polymer known as a sugar. These contain energy. Not a lot of energy, but cer a certain amount that you can just kind of break open and just use. Very convenient. Next up are lipids. Lipids store a lot of energy. When you put a bunch of lipids together, you get fat. Well, you don't become fat. You have a fat. You've created a fat. Anyway. These store a lot, a lot of energy. However, they're also harder to break open and get the energy out of. Okay, nucleic acids. These make up DNA and RNA, the genetic information that you have inside of you. Without these, your hair wouldn't be brown. If your hair is not brown, then it wouldn't be whatever color it is. These store a lot of information. That's pretty much all nucleic acids do. Last up are the amino acids. These make up proteins. You might be going, well then, what do amino acids do? Not that much on their own, but proteins do pretty much everything. Whatever your DNA or RNA says, it usually says make a protein to do something else. To recap, water is a polar molecule made up of two hydrogens bonded to an oxygen. As a result, it can form hydrogen bonds, where the positively charged hydrogen of one water can be attracted to the negatively charged oxygen of another water. Now, you rarely find pure water in nature. 
So you usually find either a solution or a suspension. In a solution, the substance being dissolved in the liquid completely disperses, and it's hard to see. In a suspension, the substance usually does not completely disperse and may even lump up at the bottom. The other thing about water is that it can have it has a pH of seven. Let's say it's very neutral. However, a pH of 14 is strongly basic, a pH of 1 is strongly acidic. In terms of carbon, carbon can form up to four bonds, and it usually makes up a bunch of monomers. Monomers are just small molecules. Put a bunch of monomers together and you get a polymer, which is just a big molecule. The four types of carbon monomers that you'll need to know for biology are carbohydrates, which make up sugars. These store a little bit of energy. Lipids, which make up fats, which store a lot of energy. Amino acids make up proteins, which do pretty much everything. And nucleic acids, which make up DNA and RNA and store information. Alright, that's all for now. Good night, Brad Pierce. See you next time.